Hi everybody, welcome back. So I have another entry here into the Blue Note 1500 project. Um, we're getting really, really close to the end of this project. So um, we're up to 1592 now. Um, so we uh, we did 15, uh, Mazzy did 1591 uh, for us, which was Lou Donaldson taken off. Um, and this one is an interesting one within the Blue Note catalog. Because this one didn't come out originally when it got released, um, and for in some respects, for collect like for people who really like the music and obviously like to collect, uh, that may not have been the worst thing in the whole world because it obviously makes this somewhat of an affordable record. Where the you know you think of the previous release of this artist to try to get your hands on an original of it would be two three thousand bucks now for one that's like in decent shape so this is going to be um and i'm actually going to take the ob off here so you could see it but i'll show you that too so this is sonny clark uh so it's blue note 1592 even though this isn't in, isn't going to say 1592 on it this is blue note 1592 they had a, a, a release that came out um like seven eight years after this one where it says BLP 1592 on it. Uh, this actually has the Japanese catalog on it because this came out in Japan originally, the original first release of this, despite it being recorded many, many years earlier and vaulted by Blue Note, came out in uh, the late 70s in Japan. And I have my notes here on the side, so let me pull that up. I believe it's 1976 that this came out in Japan. And I'll pull up my notes here so that I can verify it. Yep. So it came out in 1976 in Japan. This is the first. It was the first release of this album. It was recorded. It's two different sessions, and and that's what I wonder maybe why Blue Note didn't release them, release this album initially, was for the fact that they really do feel like two very different sessions. They don't. It doesn't quite feel like a cohesive album so much um and i wonder why maybe that's why they didn't come out with this album initially because it wasn't really like it wasn't like example no room for squares by hank mobley where even though it's two different sessions it it, it, it made sense it fit like it kind of worked this it definitely feels like it's two different sessions um and there's the ob strip for this as well um if people are interested and it's got like those catalog numbers from all the other um, ones that were in this release. This was the release um, when in Japan when they were doing the LNJ series and there's a lot of releases in this. A lot of them mostly were 1500 re-releases um, within this series but there's definitely some 4000 releases as well that came out within um, within this group as well. I have a Monk album um, that I have that came out in the LNJ series, and I'll show you the label after we talk about this a little bit. Um, it's interesting, the labels on these, because United Artists already own Blue Note at this point, but yet the Japanese releases of these LNJs actually have Liberty labels, which is very interesting. Um, so it's two different sessions, like very different sessions, very different players. You can see here from this, and you kind of get a sense a little bit of what we're looking here. Art Farmer, Jackie McLean, Paul Chambers, Philly Joe Jones, who is on the first session. The um, which side one of this was recorded January fifth, nineteen fifty-eight. Um, and if you know if you're familiar with Cool Strutting, you know that Art Farmer's on Cool Strutting. Um, and so it's it's, it's pretty much, and I'm going to pull this up just to make sure that I'm accurate, but I'm fairly confident we're talking same lineup um, that is on Cool Strutton um, is also on the first side of this album. And uh, that obviously to me tells me, and I can't verify this for you for sure, but I'm going to pull up Cool Strutton here. Cool Strutton... When you pull this up, it's Jackie McLean. It, it's the exact same lineup that you're looking at that's on Cool Strutton. And I'm going to pull up, and I, and I should have done this initially. Yep, 
there there you go so this right here this first side is basically two cuts from cool strutton that didn't make the album of cool strutton so that's why as i said these feel like very different sessions because they were very different sessions this is two tracks left over from cool strutton this is a totally different session and i'll zoom in here you can see on this session you actually are going to get um obviously sonny clark clifford jordan kenny burrell on guitar clifford jordan obviously on sax paul chambers on bass pete laroca on drums so paul chambers is your only and sonny clark is your only constants and you can see all the liner notes are also in japanese um so they feel like two very different sessions because they were two very different sessions later on they re-release this album in japan as sonny clark cool strutton volume two and i wonder if it's because side one really was two songs that were left over from cool strutton so that's kind of the background on this album um getting into and and also side two of this album was recorded um December 8th, 1957. So it was actually recorded earlier than Cool Strutton was recorded. Um, and so that's talking, you know, history of this album. W the real question is, what's the music on this album? You know, if you like Cool Strutton, are you going to like this album? And, and if you like Cool Strutton, you're absolutely going to like the first side of this album. It is very much like Cool Strutton. Um, track one on this album is called uh, Royal Flush, and it's a great head. That's actually what's playing in the background. I do have it soft, though, so that obviously it's not overpowering what we're talking about. Um, great head, really good sax solo by Jackie McLean. Trumpet solo, you know, really good trumpet solo by Art Farmer as well. I'm a huge Art Farmer fan. I've said that a few times as well. The bass solo and the drum solo are really, really good too on that. Um, absolutely just killer song. If you know, if you like Cool Strutton, that is right up the vein of Cool Strutton. Track two, um, the drum intro on track two and the drum breaks are awesome. They're so good. They're classic Philly Joe Jones, just pounding in your face stuff. The piano line is amazing in that song. Absolutely killer killer piano line from Sonny Clark in that song. Um, the sax solo is fantastic. The trumpet solo is really good. Um, there's this really awesome piano break after the sax solo where the, where Sonny Clark and um, right after the drum solo from Philly Joe, Sonny Clark comes in with this line that almost sounds like Andrew Hill-like. It's phenomenal. It's so good. Um, and then the outro of the song is absolutely killer. Um, side one is really, really good. Um, side two, in my opinion, is better than side one. And I like Cool Strutton. Cool Strutton is a great album. But it's not nearly my favorite Sonny Clark album. Um, and there are other albums of Sonny Clark I like a lot better than Cool Strutton. Uh, 1579, Sonny Clark Trio, I love that album. I think it's much better than Cole Strutton. Um, again, just my opinion, but I love that album. Side two of this album, I love that a lot more than I love Cole Strutton. And the reason that I love that side is for two reasons. Clifford Jordan is on it. I love Clifford Jordan. I think he's fantastic. He's one of my favorite sax players um, from this era of Blue Note. Every album I hear of him, I just become more and more of a fan of Clifford Jordan. I love that side because of Clifford Jordan. Um, and I'm a huge Kenny Burrell fan. And to have Kenny Burrell and Clifford Jordan playing together, it's fantastic. It's absolutely wonderful. You know, um, the two of them together really seem to meld super, super well. Um, and I really like Pete LaRocca too. Um, obviously, Paul Chambers is just an icon in the bass world. And as a bass player, I love Paul Chambers. Um, but... It starts off with minor meeting um, as the first track, and the piano head is really good. The guitar solo is fantastic on that song. Absolutely wonderful guitar solo on that song. Just solid and bass and drums just holding the whole thing together. Um, but the guitar playing on that track really is what steals the show on that track. 
it's phenomenal. Just absolutely wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, track four, which is the second track on side two, is called uh, Eastern Incident. And it's a mid-tempo song, um, absolutely lovely melody line on that song. Clifford Jordan on that is outstanding absolutely outstanding on it um his tone is wonderful his phrasing is wonderful it's just absolutely killerly great stuff um the solo by sonny clark is as well really really good on that track and then kenny burrell comes in with a fantastic solo as well um i can't speak more highly of side two of this album um side one really feels like a continuation of cool strutton side two is a totally different thing so so good um and then track five is uh which closes out the album is called little sunny now what's interesting to note too and i'm looking at it here sunny clark actually wrote four out of the five of these he wrote all of side two and he wrote the first song on side one which is royal flush lover on side uh the second side second song on side one it was a standard um and so the last track of the album which was the Little Sunny, that has um, a fantastic guitar solo in it. Really good head, fantastic guitar solo. Even better sax solo by Clifford Jordan. Absolutely great solo. Clark then takes a solo. And Paul Chambers and Pete LaRocca, something about the two of them together just absolutely created this rock solid foundation. It was different than him and Philly Joe. Billy Joe was so in your face, so hard pounding. Pete LaRocca was a different kind of drummer. He could be aggressive, but he could be light too. And he was very, vert, like, he was very, um, he was much more of a chameleon, I think, than Philly Joe. Philly Joe definitely had his sound, and his sound fit well within the sessions he was in. But I think he was a little less of a chameleon than, um, than some other drummers of that era. Whereas I think Pete LaRocca was a little bit more of a chameleon. He would fit those sessions, what he needed to do for the sessions he'd be able to do, but he could be as in your face as you needed him to be. He could be as light as you needed him to be. Now, Philly Joe could do that too. There are times that he does that. There's a great Bill Evans album that has Philly Joe on it called Here Comes California, which um, Philly Joe is much lighter on than his usual uh, Philly Joe type for, uh, you know, phrasing and uh, just kind of in-your-face style. So I definitely, definitely recommend this album. Um, it, you know, I, it's not the absolute easiest album in the world to find, but it's also not incredibly challenging to find. You know, you might... The, the biggest struggle you might find with this album is just finding a U.S. seller that has it. Um, it's very easy to find a Japanese seller that has this album. Um, and this is what I was talking about, about those Division of Liberty labels which I find very interesting because these were not, as I said, they weren't, Blue Note was already United Artist at this point. Now it even says this is a um, rights and manufacturing um, of Toshiba EMI. Toshiba EMI was the licensing at that point um, for the uh, Japanese pressing. Uh, King Records, I think, did you know a lot of the 80s pressings um, of the Japanese stuff. But Toshiba EMI did a lot of the 70s pressing. And this Division of Liberty label um, was on a lot of these LNJ pressings from the 70s. There's a few that are even, um, there was a label called Transition, which uh, Blue Note, uh, really Liberty, then United Artists bought out. And they, for some reason, pressed them on Blue Note labels. Um, there's some Donald Byrd albums and there's a Doug Watkins album that came out on these Division of Liberty labels, LNJ cataloging, which were never even Blue Note releases, which was always a little strange to me. But this was truly a Blue Note. Um, two sessions that were vaulted by Blue Note that became 1592 Sonny Clark. Uh, they called this Sonny Clark, uh, just the Sonny Clark um, Quintet, I believe is how they labeled this album. And then it did become branded as Sonny Clark Volume, uh, Cool Strutton Volume 2. And then uh, I think reverted back to Sonny Clark Quintet. And at some point got English liner notes on it. Um, but this particular one is all has all Japanese liner notes on it. So all my track listings and everything I had to go to 
um, to Discogs to get the track listings um, and, and the record dates, which is on this, I'm sure. It's just I don't read Japanese, so I couldn't pull it, obviously, from the cover. So hopefully you enjoyed this look into an album that's like, you know, not quite the normal uh, Blue Note catalog release. Um, and obviously, you know, isn't something necessarily that's going to be coming out on those classic series. This this easily, I feel like, could have been like a tone poet type thing, but definitely wouldn't obviously be a classic type thing. But I have not heard any talk about this album being released as a tone poet. Um, so for the time being, you have the Japanese releases of this album. Um, and there's a few of them. There's a few of the Japanese releases that came out of this album. Um, if I look on Discogs, for example, there are 12 releases of this album. There's some uh, there's some CD releases of this, but this came out and there was it was branded as Cool Strutton Volume Two in in the 80s. Uh, then it went back to Sonny Clark Quintet in the 80s. Came out again um, on CD a few times, and then it came out actually in 2013 um, again rebranded re as Cool Strutton Volume Two. So I guess you basically got five releases of this album, um, all in Japan, and then there's some CD, but you can find it to listen to and stream online, um, so it's definitely accessible. Uh, this was a little bit of a longer review, sorry for that, I just, I thought the history of this album was kind of interesting, and I wanted to really talk about that, as well as the music on it. So hopefully you enjoyed, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.